And now the federal government on Thursday inaugurated a committee for the implementation of the Onosaye report, which majorly recommends the merger of the government's ministries, departments and agencies to cut the cost of governance. The inauguration of the implementation committee followed the announcement by President Bola Tinobu's led federal government on February 28, 2024, that parts of the recommendations in the 12-year-old Onosaye report would be implemented. The 800-page report recommended that 263 of the statutory agencies be slashed to 161, 38 agencies be scrapped, 52 be merged, and 14 be reverted to departments in various ministries, among others. A statement on Thursday by the Director of Information, Office of the Secretary General of the Federation, Shegun Imohise, said the SGF George Akume inaugurated the committee on the implementation of the recommendations on the review of reports and white papers on restructuring and rationalization of federal government status agencies and commissions. Outlining the mandate of the committee, Akume said the committee would identify redundancies and overlaps or conflicting objectives among the mandates of different organizational units. It will also define strategic objectives to ensure the revised mandates align with the strategic objectives and priorities of the government. And also the federal government on Thursday inaugurated a committee for the implementation of the Oronsoye reports just like uh, we brought to you uh, in the earlier reports. And the inauguration of the committee uh, was sequel to the February 28th uh, report of the committee that the government actually set up. And now let's move away from that particular report. The Minister of State for Defense, Dr. Belu Matawali, has directed the Defense Intelligence Agency to go after those calling for a coup in the country. This is according to a statement on Thursday by the Director of Information, Press and Public Relations of the Defense Ministry, Mr. Henshaw Ogubike. Matawali described those calling for an undemocratic change of government as agents of darkness and warned that anyone caught would not be treated lightly. The minister urged all Nigerians to support and keep faith with the government of President Bola Tinobu in the efforts to make Nigeria great. He reaffirmed the commitment of the to defending the constitution and upholding democracy, as well as ensuring the safety and security of the nation. For the umpteenth time, the Nigerian army on Tuesday dismissed fears of a possible coup in the country. The chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Taurid Lagwaja, Speaking at a seminar for the Nigerian army, army officers in Abuja, stated that the army was dedicated to upholding the constitution. Lagbaja said personnel of his service had accepted the democratic system of government in place in the country and had no plan to truncate it. He described personnel of the Nigerian army under his leadership as agents of democracy. The federal government has raised the alarm over maternal and infant mortality in Sokoto State, saying 44 out of 100 newborn babies in the state die. The government said it has therefore sought homegrown solutions to maternal and infant fatality in and across the state. The special advisor in charge of the Presidential Advisory Committee on Health, Salma Ibrahim, made the recommendation during a courtesy call on Governor Ahmed Ali on Thursday. She disclosed that Sokoto State still has the highest burden of maternal and infant death in the country. She noted an increase in family planning in the state, which she said would reduce maternal death. Ibrahim said that the president was concerned about the health of women and children in the country, which was the reason why they came up with an accelerated emergency plan to address the menace in the country. We're still in the north. Over 280 pupils and teachers of government secondary school and LEA primary school at Kuriga, Kaduna State, were abducted by bandits on Thursday, triggering national outrage. The Jamaatu Nasri Islam Amnesty International, the Parent Teacher Association of Nigeria, and Nigeria Union of Teachers and the House of Representatives condemned the attack and asked the government to rescue the victims immediately. The bandits reportedly invaded the Kuruga area of the Chicken Local Government area of Kaduna State on Thursday, shooting at their victims before taking away at least 280 of the pupils and teachers from both schools. The incident occurred barely 24 hours after insurgents 
abducted 200 internally displaced women in Borono State. The women were kidnapped in Ngala, the headquarters of Gamburu Ngala in Borono State, while fetching firewood in the bush. Penultimate Thursday, bandits invaded the Goningura in the same Chikun local government area, prompting residents to barricade the Kaduna Abuja Expressway in protest against the abduction of an unspecified number of people in the area. Talking financial crimes now, an official of the EFCC, Bami Yoharana, has said that his analysis of some documents used to release $6.2 million from the Central Bank of Nigeria in February 2023 showed that the documents were forged. Haruna, who is a forensic document examiner, said that these are the resumed trial of the immediate past CBN governor, Gadun Emefele, before the Federal Capital Territory High Court in Abuja. The EFCC on June 18, 2023, arraigned Emefele on amended 20 counts in which he was accused of impersonating the secretary to the government of the Federation to illegally move $6.2 million from the CBN vaults. In the charges, the EFCC alleged that on February 8, 2023, Emefele connived with one Odo Uchemi, who is now on the run to obtain $6.2 million from the CBN, claiming that it was requested by the SGF via a letter dated 26 January 2023 with ref number SGF 43-L.01. The prosecutor applied to the court to tender the forensic report dated January 25, 2024, and other documents attached as exhibits. Mayfield's lawyer, Matthew Burka, SAN, did not oppose. Justice Hamza Moaz subsequently admitted them as evidence and marked them as exhibits FDE during cross-examination by Burka. The witness asked the court to rely on his report. When asked if Emefele's signature was an analyzed, he said no. Also asked if EFCC operatives submitted the materials analyzed. Haruna said operatives of the EFCC submitted the request to the department. The matter was subsequently adjourned till March 11. Let's take you to Niger State now, where the governor, Mohamed Bago, has called on the federal government to censor the contents of the social media platforms in Nigeria, saying that they are being abused. Bago said this, will check, said this will checkmate the spread of fake news in the country while promoting objective reportage by practitioners of conventional journalism. He made this known on Thursday during his declaration as the grand patron of the Nigerian Union of Journalists, Niger State Council. The governor became the latest politician to call for regulated social media after President Bola Tinubu's chief of staff, Femi Mbajabi Amila, called for social media regulation. The NUJ national president, Chris Isuguzo, also presented the governor with a certificate, said the honor was in recognition of his exemplary leadership qualities.